Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. It's a cold and rainy day here in Buffalo and I've decided to stay home today. So I'm going to do a video from home. And this video is going to be a little different. I'm going to talk about one thing that might help you better process your images. And that one thing is the color and tone of the workspace you're working in. I'm going to try to demonstrate this to begin with, with this optical illusion. This is called Adelson's Optical Illusion. As you can see, it's a checkerboard. It has a cylinder on it, and the cylinder is casting a shadow. And on the checkerboard, we have two color circles. This lighter color circle is on the lighter square, and this darker color circle is on the darker color square. Well, would you believe me if I told you that these two color circles are the same exact color? That's the illusion. This lighter color circle is on the lighter color square. And what happens when you have that, that color will look brighter. This color circle is on the darker color square. And that makes that color look darker. Now, I'll prove to you that these are the same exact color. What I'll do is I'll go over here to the color swatches. And I'll click so we have a color swatch. And if I just go over this color circle right here and click with my left mouse button, that's the color. And you can see that it has a hue of 39 degrees, saturation 100%, uh, brightness of 81%, red is 207, 133, 0. And just easier to just reference the uh, hashtag CF8500. That is what that color is. Now if I go down to this brighter color and click with the left mouse button, it didn't change. It's the same exact color. And just to prove it, I'll click on this gray. So you can see a change to gray. Now I'll click on this CF8500. I'll reset, then click on that one, CF8500. It's the same exact color, but to our perception, they're different. And that's why I'm bringing this up is our workspace. This area surrounding whatever we're working on could actually influence us when we're doing our post-processing. If that area is very bright, and on top of it, if we're in a darker ambient room, like this shadow is representing, then whatever we're processing is going to look brighter to us. Conversely, if this area is very dark, and to top that off, if we're in a very bright ambient room, then that, whatever we're working on, is going to look darker. And it it's, could be a subtle um, thing, but it is a thing, and it is something you should be aware of. Now, for this demonstration, I have this photo of an apple. And what I did was, is I just clipped the apple out and put it on a white background. All right, so it's an apple on a white background. No big deal. Now, that same exact clipped apple on a black background. Now, it's subtle, but if you actually let your eyes rest and then look at it, this apple that's on the dark background is going to look like it's more uh, colorful, more intense color than when it's on the white background. Now, I'm sure there's a physiological reason for this, and I could guess what it is, but I'm not going to bring it up because I don't want to be wrong, <laughs> but it is an effect. So this workspace all around our image really is important, and it really does affect how we might process our images. With most software, you could actually change this border around the image. You could change its color. I'll show you how to do it in Photoshop and Lightroom, but it, I'm sure you could do it in other applications as well. You're just going to have to research whatever application you're re using, like On One Photo Raw or Luminar or whatever, and see how you could change this border. But what do you change it to? Well, you want it as neutral as possible. In the world of photography, 18% gray or medium gray is as neutral as it gets. So that's what you'd prefer it to be. If you're in Photoshop, just right click on the border and go to medium gray. This shade of gray should influence us the least when we're processing an image. Now, if you go over to Lightroom, you would do the same thing. Just right click on the border and go to medium gray. And again, that should influence us the least. One thing I noticed just playing around here is this medium gray is darker than that medium gray. Uh, so 
there's no exact, uh, even, even in the world of Adobe, it isn't exact, but you want something more towards the middle of 18% gray. If you have an 18% gray card, what I would recommend is you hold it up here and you pick the gray that best matches that gray card uh, for any application you may be using. And then I think uh, you'll see that your processing will probably be more spot on when it comes to just brightness and color, um, which of course is very important. So give it a try. Let me know in your comments below what you think about this, if you think it's hogwash, or if you think that it is important, or maybe it's semi-important, whatever your opinion is, leave it below. I'd like to know what it is. Also, while you're down there, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and remember to click that little bell so you get updates. Also, if you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you know of anyone that would benefit from watching this video, please share it. And finally, follow me on Instagram. I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram, and in the description below this video, I have a link to my Instagram as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.